Cozy Sheridan is a singer-songwriter who has written about topics that might include love songs of adults, practical philosophy for a complicated world, the stock market crash of 2008, on being a landlord, and she has also rewritten Greek myths like Persephone, Runs Away with Hades the Biker, and parodies on women and aging. She has won the Troubadour Award at Telluride Bluegrass Festival and New Folk Songwriting Contest at Kerrville Folk Festival in 1992. And since then, she has been on the road in clubs, concert halls, coffee houses, and played in house concerts as well as Carnegie Hall. She has performed from Seattle to Omaha to Chicago to Boston, where she has made her home more recently. Cozy has taught classes in songwriting, performance, and guitar, and workshops at adult music camps across the country, and in 2008 co-founded the Moab Folk Camp in Moab, Utah. She has a number of CDs, and in 2014, Sing Out Magazine selected her single Pretty Bird as one of their great CDs of the year. She is here to share some of her original songs with us today and joined by Charlie Koch and Chris Bamer and John Bamer. Please welcome Cozy Sheridan. <laughs> A certain tree I will make my nest You can write to me at this address I'll be there and then I'll be gone No matter where we live We all move on Make me a raven's wing And I will return in the spring When the desert is a beautiful thing I will fly Oh, how the pretty bird sings Fly away Oh, how the pretty bird sings Fly away Do you know your neighbors? Do you know your town? And do they pick you up if you fall down? Do you grow best in a certain kind of ground? Do we get to keep every home we ever found? Oh, how the pretty birds sing, fly away. Oh, how the pretty birds sing, fly away. And I make it up as I go along. Fly away Oh, how the pretty birds sing Fly away Oh, how the pretty birds sing Fly away Oh, how the pretty birds sing Fly away I love this scarf that Chris is wearing. She rocked it. I thought, it looks like Easter is here. I just love it. It's such a pretty color. It's like happy. Told her I, it used to be like on top of a table. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It used to be on a table. Um, so I have spent many years on the road, as Cheryl was mentioning. And when I first became a folk musician, I, I dropped out of college and uh, called my father from a bar in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and said, I'm going to be a folk singer for the rest of my life. And that was my business plan. 
And I can't say it's always been the most successful one, but sort of what I've learned to do was to just do a show and get in my car and go to the next show. And One time I was uh, out in Nebraska on I-80 thinking about whether or not there would be a, a patron saint of the folk singer on the road. Well, November is falling and I'm driving through the dark. I know every night you cannot feel strong. I am on my way to the next church basement. I got coffee and a map and a song. And as I ramble around the highway, Woody Guthrie, watch over me. Cause all I know is how to go from town to town And hope the peaches fall down from the tree Would he watch over me? And I have a few songs And miles of memory of how most lives They are not beyond repair there are ways the world is broken But I can say for certain Most people are good Most everywhere And as I ramble around The highway Woody got three Watch over me Cause all I know is How to go from town to town And hope the peaches Fall down from the tree would he watch over me? So I am on my way to the next part of nowhere and I'm looking for the center and the light. My father hoped I'd be someone of renown. I'm to a new town tonight And as I ramble around the highway What do you got three? Watch over me All I know is how to go from town to town And hope the peaches fall down from the tree And as I ramble around the highway got three watch over me all I know is how to go from town to town and hope the peaches fall down from the tree would he watch over me would he watch over Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Chris and Charlie, I think of them as my secret weapons. They are just the most amazing sound. And I was, we were singing that song. I had this moment of joy and realizing, I wish you guys had been with me in Nebraska. It would have been an easier tour. It feels effortless to sing with these guys. I just love it. So uh, Cheryl said I was a landlord. I was a landlord very briefly, and I was a lousy one. And. Uh, I had a house in Utah, which if you're a folk singer, that's sort of where you can afford to buy your home. So I had a house in Moab that I rented uh, theoretically to two people, and then I came back and uh, discovered that um, they had multiplied uh, without checking the lease. And um, I would write these passive-aggressive emails at 2 in the morning and wake Charlie up and say, can I send this email to the tenant? And he'd say, no, you, you can't send that email. And so I was never able to send any of my angry emails, but I did write this song as sort of a... Uh, Stress release after deciding I would sell the house. Ready? I am your landlord. I thought I'd drop by to see what you'd done to the house. You know the coffee maker goes on the other side of the sink next to the toaster. 
What do you mean you don't have a toaster? What's wrong with you? And I am your landlord. I have firm ideas about what is clean and how it's next to godliness. And this house isn't going to heaven with that bathroom. Let's just close the door. I thought there were just the two of you. I didn't know about your 15 friends who would come by to do their laundry. Every weekend I am your landlord. Tension with the tenants. I'm your landlord. Pay the rent with some repentance. I'm your landlord. Confrontation over the occupation of the house. I am your landlord I think some things are right and some are wrong I don't think the kitchen is where the guest bed belongs what is in the guest bedroom should we open that door I know that you said that your sister she is living out on the land I think she and her dog are living in the driveway in that white camper van I'm your landlord Lord. Attention with the tenants, I'm your landlord. Pay the rent with some repentance, I'm your landlord. Confrontation over the occupation with your landlord. Do you ever draw your blinds? I'm your landlord. I just want of the house. Thank you. Um, so I was planning on this and another one, but I didn't really look at the clock very well. And I know it's not really like smoothing me, but Cheryl, how are we doing on time? I think we're doing good, right? Two, excellent. Been doing this a long time. You can tell I'm a pro. I'm all prepared. Mm -hmm. So um, there once was a woman named Eurydice, and as will happen, she died and w had to go live in the underworld, the land of the dead, and uh, she wasn't quite ready for this transition and as with transition some days she's okay with it and some days she's not and um, I find transitions difficult um, I don't know anybody who doesn't actually but I think of Eurydice and how she's not sure if she wants to be down there yet or not it takes her a while she eventually decides she is gonna live in the land of the dead and I think we all eventually come to the change uh, we, uh, we took my father to a nursing home yesterday and left him there which is a difficult thing and as I'm leaving he's saying you know I want to go home and I'm not really wanting to leave and as I walk out the door I talk to the social worker who says it takes a while but after a while they get used to it it's better if you just don't visit for a while so this is called you're ready to good night Sweet Eurydice, good night. Your open sky, your morning light. How do I let go of your hand? A woman in a desert land. I will sing of summer's own. Cherries bloom and then they're gone And all I love leaving soon The other side, the other room Let go, we hold so tight You're in a cheese. 
be alive and let the dead be dead if i am to sing a living sound then one of us must turn around what do i do about you eurydice what do i do with all of this memory a woman in a desert land how do i let go of your hand the open sky the morning Thank you. It's just such a pleasure to sing with you guys. Thank you. Um, I want to bring up John Boehmer as well. So Chris and John are uh, going to help us with this last song, which uh, this is um, everything you might need to know about Napoleon in under three minutes. And Chris and John are going to do the descant. They will be playing the British Army, and they will be singing. I just love how in uh, you know classical music the soloists rise and they sing to you, and then they sit down again. I love that. So. I, I've, they are it, nicely uh, indulging me, so I get to feel I'm doing my own little messiah for Napoleon here. <laughs> I didn't get all the facts in here, but I, I, I feel I got some of the more salient ones. Everybody ready? This has been a pleasure, by the way. We thank you very much for your time and your attention, and um, look forward to hearing the rest of you after the break. All right. <laughs> I will sing of an early French export, Napoleon and his empire. Both were short. Before the Louvre, Catherine de Neuve, there was the man that he said, I will take Vienna. We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. The Empress Josephine, the little man, has a dream. Goes and gets a big machine, then Wellington comes on the scene. Has a better sailing team, sends our little fiend off to Elba. He took Italy, Spain, and Prussia, which is Germany and Poland now, but it sounds like Russia. You won't find Prussia on a map of Europe anymore. It was an empire that failed. What should we learn about that for? We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. The Empress Josephine, the little man, has a dream. Goes and gets a big machine. And Wellington comes on the scene. Has a better sailing team. Sends our little fiend off to Elba. He knew how to set a goal and say, I think I can, which doesn't sound French, but he was Corsican. So when you lose the game, don't sit on the bench. Napoleon ruled France. He wasn't even French. We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. The Empress Josephine, the little man, has a dream. Goes and gets a big machine. Then Wellington comes on the scene. Has a better sailing team. Sends our little fiend off to Elba. In his coffin, inside his French cut suit, his body, they say, it's missing the manly root. It was embalmed, we could stick it back on, but who could tell? By now the rest of him, it's missing as well. We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. The Empress Josephine, the little man, has 
has a dream Goes and gets a big machine Then Wellington comes on the scene As a better sailing team Sends our little fiend off to Elba Sends our little fiend off to Elba Sends a little fiend off to Elba On Preston Beach, where I walked its length from end to end, my mind was busy with many things. And though I tried to listen to the sea, to the crush of sand beneath my boots, and to the songs of the seabirds, many thoughts intruded upon that quiet place. But the air was cold and crisp, and I was glad to be there. Then. As I came to the rocks at the far end, I stopped and turned to begin making my way back the way I had come. I had not been aware of the wind that had been at my back on the way down. Now that same wind that had got, gone unnoticed was whipping into my eyes, making them water and sting with cold, clean, fresh air. I stuck closer to the water's edge on my return. And once or twice, when I was not paying attention, my boots got wet right through to my toes. I stepped on rocks covered with green, goldeny seaweed plants. And more than once, I slipped, almost falling face first onto the wet sand. The tide was ebbing. The beach was wide and vast. And where the sand was flat between the rocky places, I could see at that acute angle, the soft glistening of water glass on its surface. The purple sky, wide and high, was reflected on the surface of the sand. Sky above, sky below. I walked carefully, afraid of cracking its delicate surface beneath my heavy boots. Thank you. I remember a prayer written by a man I loved. God, please hear my plea, because when this man prays, the world is filled with love. I remember a diner where we sat and waited, a trembling waitress who whispered we should go, men leaving coffee on the counter to follow us out the door. A truck adorned with gun rack, revving its motor so close behind us that their hands and his could shake in friendship, if that had been the goal. Leaning out the window just long enough to make us duck for cover. As they drove by, their laughter piercing like shards of broken glass. And I felt the jagged edges of the world remind me that his prayer had not been answered yet. My memory goes back further to images of my childhood. The hate stare, segregation, sit-ins, marches, church bombings, and goes back even further to the collective memory of our damaged past, slavery, lynchings, a capital city dedicated to liberty and justice for all, built by those who were not free. And I feel the brokenness of a world divided in two parts, separate and not equal. And I understand the necessity of remembering. I remember holding a newborn babe and believing the world would change for him, knowing in my heart that no one could meet his steady gaze with anything but love, having to believe that the world would be a better place for each child who came into it. That was in the prayer. And it is better, so much better in so many ways, but the prayer has not been answered yet. In 2015 and 2016, 
we are still waiting, waiting for a time when we don't need to remember. I've always been perplexed by the two-body problem. How do we think about plural when we are merely one? One cannot touch one's other any more than substance separates from shadow. The sun cannot burn itself, nor the sea know its own wetness. Yet loneliness calls company into being. No thing moves over and becomes thing. And now, when there are two, Relationship is undeniable. A mind knows itself but incompletely until it meets another mind. Each self stays undefined in the space empty of other selves without an ear to hear the silent passing echoes. Then friendship, that radiance that shines us together, greets our hearts and greens our being with the promise of becoming colors our aging with trust and our passing with a kind anticipation. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a